Yo, it's good to be the round table. Yes, Michael, even though it's table square. Michael and Peter here. Yeah. Uh, t you know, if you've uh, seen some of our former round table discussions, pretty casual. Mm -hmm. uh, previous videos, we talked about the future of e-readers yeah. and e-ink. Our favorite e-reader of the year, 2017. Yeah, introspectives. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about... Amazon yeah. and the Kindle and what's next it is the beginning of 2018 so uh, likely Amazon will release something this year we hope yeah uh, they were uh, w recently what we saw in 2017 was everyone's adopting warm lighting or a warmer set of LEDs and then I was thinking well Amazon was late to the party on that and Mike and I were discussing like well they made that audio dongle and then they had Bluetooth and then they got rid of the battery case on the Oasis so we're like Amazon's kind of all over the place and we were just shooting the breeze and we're like what's next what is next for Amazon what can they possibly do hardware wise well I mean you look at the new Kindle Oasis yep, I mean 2017 it's like waterproof waterproof it's yeah it's you know, much larger screen than the 2016 over here and they went away with the battery case that was a uh um, an unavoidable choice when you purchase this item. A lot of people are unaware, but it's the first e-reader that actually is using IMX7 Freescale dual core processor. Right, right. Something that's like been around for years, but no like premium e-reader has ever used it up until now. And Amazon never made it any of their marketing material. Freescale actually told me directly right. that this is what Amazon was using. And so we broke the news on, on the website. Um, you know, audiobook player. Yeah. Um, you know, Bluetooth. I mean, it, we've come a long way <laughs> from yeah. like the Kindle keyboard. We had keyboard. this on the table because we were looking at this and we were like, man, full screen keyboard, volume control, 3.5 uh, millimeter headphone power, jack. Yeah, 3.5 mil headphone jack, and then the uh, physical page turn buttons, and then they went to the Kindle Touch, which had stereo speakers on it with a headphone jack, and that yeah. was still one of my favorite all around e readers. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people think that the new Kindle Oasis was the first one that like actually played audio, no. but these old e readers oh, yeah. had this weird Amazon audiobook store, mm -hmm. but they only had like. 50 titles on it that you could yep, actually yep. purchase. You had to kind of sideload in your own music. Yep. And audiobooks weren't even a thing back then. No, Not no, really. No. And they had the uh, the DX, which was basically the very, very large Kindle keyboard. Had a keyboard, audio, and it was also 400 bucks at the time, I yeah. think. Yeah. And you know, Amazon discontinued and sold it and discontinued yeah, yeah, it and brought it back so, yeah. and it's like not touch screen it's like d-pad like yeah you had the control pad so you had to like if if you wanted to highlight something you have to press down like a hundred times to get there yeah yeah it was yeah, terrible that was pretty bad um so I mean is Amazon in a position to release a large screen e-reader um as you know if you've seen any of our reviews which we've probably done about six or seven hundred on our YouTube <laughs> yeah, channel just, just a few. Uh, we reviewed every e-reader yeah. probably that's ever come out ever from obscure Chinese e-readers yeah. to all the European all the Russian ones uh, all the ones that have come out in North America uh, all over the world like you know Brazil even you know uh, South Korea yeah. I mean we review them all so we're sort of in a position to sort of extrapolate what Amazon will do next based on the competition so I think that due to the success of the remarkable and then onyx is releasing yeah. their note yeah. which is sort of their answer to the remarkable right. that there is a market for 8 inch e-readers and the Oasis 2 are teaching us that people are more than happy to pay a premium for an e-reader because an e-reader unlike a smartphone or a tablet yeah you're not upgrading them every year you're buying an mm -hmm. e-reader and you're hanging on to it for like totally. three or four years yeah and we've done many polls on our website and people have stated that you know they don't upgrade it every year two years three years it's usually about four year cycle uh, or a really compelling reason to upgrade sure. and we'll or you break it or something exactly yeah. the DX was an experiment and people bought them in enough quantities but they didn't buy them by the millions like they did the Kindle yeah, basic totally. uh, you know the <clears throat> Kindle paperweight uh, the Amazon Alexa yep. you know they didn't buy them in that quantity that Amazon could rationalize releasing a large screen e-reader and I think the DX was you know when they released it, it was almost before its time 
It was. It seemed so. Yeah. And actually, uh, since you mentioned the Oasis 2, the 2017, if uh, you guys don't know this already, every other Amazon device has been six inches. This is the only one above six inches since the DX, which was 2011, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So in eight, seven or eight years, depending on production date and all that, this is the only time they've strived away from the six inch e-reader. Yeah. Yeah. It's expensive as hell too. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, we'll go Canadian dollars because we're in Canada here. Shipped from Amazon.ca to us. This thing was $440 Canadian base. I mean, that that's that's a heavy price to pay for an e-reader. Yeah, it's yeah. like, that's a special offers, like, edition. Yeah. <laughs> the lowest memory edition. If you wanted, offers. if you wanted, is like, it? It 3G non-special offers, yeah. the most memory, I mean, 500 it can, bucks it can get or up more. There, yeah, yeah um, this is the special offers, that's right. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about what Amazon could do next. Uh, color paper could be a reality. Mm -hmm. If you forget, uh, Amazon did purchase Liquid Vista yes. from Samsung. Shem -shem. And so it's electro wedding technology. It's basically sort of uh, much akin to mirror cell technology. But they did that a few years back and we haven't seen any advancements from that. Yeah, I mean, uh, since Amazon bought the company, all I've really known is that they, they have a thing in China so they have like a fab in China yeah. they have ex they've hired senior executives yeah. they have um, their R&D center in the Netherlands and they've hired like all the key management positions there they don't have they, they don't have any of the juniors and things like that but all the executive positions are filled and so basically what is happening is like the stuff's being uh, they're making screens in Ch China then are sent to the Netherlands uh, to be like tested and evaluated and then feedback sent back to China <laughs> yeah, yeah. China's sending it back yeah, yeah, you know yeah. blah 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 Production but nightmare. this has been happening for like three or four Years it has, I remember and that, yeah. you know, people are saying, Well, it may not make it to e readers, but we may see it in a future, uh, like a fire, fire tablet, other applications. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at like a fire tablet battery life, you know, tablets in general, they don't really have good battery life. No, no, like if you're watching videos and you know, Netflix and stuff, you get a good day or two if it's that. Tr it's true, by the end of the day, just casually using a tablet, forgetting to turn the screen off. Uh, just off and on. Yeah, you're out of batteries by the end of the day, if not the next day. E-readers, I look at. I haven't. We haven't used the Oasis One in forever, and it's still on. Yeah, it's been months. It's just yeah. on standby. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's uh, the difference, really. Yeah, I mean, Liquid Vista technology. I don't think will come to e-readers. I at think least more not, realistic, no. it'll come to tablets yeah. because it'll just be a replacement for LCD sure. screen, and instead of being a day or two, you'll get like a few weeks, that's, and that makes a world the world of difference with tablets. It does. It does yeah, um, the, we saw Bluetooth um, user. Uh, functioning Bluetooth on the Oasis 2 where you can actually select Bluetooth and hook it up to portable speakers or headphones so that was an advancement there yeah and the year before that they had the dongle in which you hook up to previous uh, Amazon devices to get audio so if they're gonna bring back external speakers I don't know how much of a demand it is for that but it does seem like audio is kind of making a comeback yeah I like I, I kind of think that like much like the new iPhones, it's there's they've I think 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks are a thing of the past. Yeah, it's yeah, all about Bluetooth. Yeah. Pick, you know, I mean, Beats. Everyone's making like right. really high end right. wireless headphones, and then on like the mid to like low end, you can get like a pair of wireless headphones for like thirty or forty dollars, like decent ones yeah, too, yeah, yeah. like ones with like cat be... ears sure. and like all sort. You know, ones that like I've seen headphones like for like thirty or forty bucks that like have different LED colors around sure, there. Yeah, yeah, there's and all like, sorts of crap out and, there. <laughs> and could, can, you can put your own images on there from yeah. like the smartphone. Wow. So I mean, you can really kind of customize the hell it out of them be. and stuff like that. And that's the, you know, the industry is getting away from 3.5 millimeter sure, headphone jacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple was like the guys that initially kind of made the call to do that. And then more companies, even like Google are starting to right. emulate it kind of now because you could, fit more internals it's in just there. less stuff you gotta yeah, worry about exactly too. less stuff you have to reroute less holes you have to drill in all of your casings uh, another thing that has been phased out over the past couple years sd cards and expandable memory but amazon's really kind of never done that yeah they, they, i think they did that on the kindle or the kindle K 2 kindle, kindle one that had one, yeah, an sd card that's right and from then uh every other e-reader has done it in some capacity have always had some sort of sd card along the way Amazon didn't really ever do that, and they were also the first guys to offer 
for 32 gigs onboard storage with the Japanese manga model that was only available in Japan. Kobo just recently released the 32 gigabyte Oasis. Uh, uh, or uh, one or limited one. edition. Sorry, Oasis is right here. That's yeah. right. So uh, we might see more and more e-readers in the future adopt bigger onboard uh, non-user removable storage moving forward. And I think that Amazon uh, is, is strongly considering offering different memory models. Like a tiered system like exactly. Apple. Exactly. Yeah, like 3G, gig, right. uh, like Wi-Fi, 8 gigabytes, 16 yeah, gigabytes, or 32 space. gigs, and it's like you can select like your storage because um, these days digital content is it's taking up exactly, a lot of room. That's the thing. Um, yeah. Audiobooks, like right. if you sideload in your own audiobook, it's like anywhere between 100 and 500 megs. That's right. And on yeah. a 4 gig like uh, e-reader, that's like three it's or four nothing. audiobooks. No. And if Amazon is getting serious about audiobooks, they're going to have to need to offer like a 32 gig option yep. uh, or more, like even the 64 gigs in order for people to sideload in their own music, podcasts, uh, audiobooks, and so on. Even like PDFs and stuff. We've kind of gotten beyond ebooks and pdfs yeah, to I more mean, audio type of content absolutely and they have and that's the reason they have bluetooth on there is to get your audio out of the e-reader into your ears and yeah an audio file is way larger than an ebook and that's why the manga model because it was based around manga one manga file is way bigger than an ebook so you couldn't have a manga model with four gigs you put like three of them on there and you'd be out of space yeah 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 manga yeah. is it takes up a ton of space especially yeah. like the you know single issues which are like 20 to 30 pages not bad right. but a lot of the manga they're graphic the novels points, yes. like issue 1 to 19 sure, it's yeah. like 500 pages right. and stuff and with all the Amazon devices much like all devices if they say 4 gigs it's really like 2.9 yeah because there's all this stuff on there that just loads it down I think the manga model was 32 you only get 27.9 something so there's several gigs that actually takes away from what is advertised yeah so um larger the, storage and audio I guess is what we're kind of leaning towards yeah so far. I mean uh, I think it's realistic that Amazon will do something even though with a larger screen like a kindle dx2 I, yeah, I'm, I'm i'm with that as well because there was a reason they they went to a larger screen on this and haven't done so for the past six or seven years i yeah. think it's because everyone else is doing it testing the market i think so so realistically amazon will probably do like the comfort light system like yeah, sort of like the light system you know uh the orange like light that yep. sort of eliminates sort of like a lot of the white and blue light that emits from like the e-reader that that's probably realistic yep. they've already done it with like the fire tablets where they have like the, well, the blue tablets, shade sure uh yeah, they yeah. call it blue shade yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's probably realistic that they incorporate that because even barnes and noble's doing barnes it. barnes and noble tolino uh, a couple of the third party manufacturers in Pocket Eastern book Europe, is done pocket it. Book, uh, like Kobo, of course. Yeah, yeah. Every, everybody's doing it now. Yeah, so except for Amazon's Kindle, yeah. like the last one that's still making e-readers that hasn't done yeah. it yet. So, and it's proved to be popular and a selling point. Right. Uh, so comfort light. Uh, more storage more options. More storage. Audio capabilities moving forward. They're not going to put all this audio emphasis on the Oasis 2 and then just axe it for the next one. So audio uh, and larger screen. Well... Larger screen, I think, is something that we want. I know. It, yeah. it, I, I don't know <laughs> I if really Amazon is it. actually going to do it. Uh, same with color e ink. Just a big slate. Like, uh, e ink. Um, I don't think color is going to come in 2018. No. Like, well, for, for the next Amazon device, I will say there will not be color. There's no way. Color oh, would be compelling. Oh, no, I, mean, I know it would be uh, compelling, obviously. I don't yeah. think that, like, so e ink has color e ink technology. Oh, there's a, there'll be a link in this YouTube video yeah. where it lists all, like, the tech type of stuff. But suffice to say, it was initially made for digital signage, right. but it displays way more colors than the original e ink, the color e ink that came out like 2013, right. like 2012, right, 2013. Right, right. Uh, that was not ready for prime time. So the <laughs> colors were all washed out. It looked like garbage. Yeah, it, but it e meters like have come a long way like... since 2012 oh, yeah, to 2018. Sure. Uh, but I don't think, from, from talking with e ink, that they haven't. Uh, added the capability for co the color e-paper to talk with e and Regal and for it to be on e-readers yet. It's mm. just digital signage at this point. Yeah. But they want to bring it to e-readers, but I don't think 2018 will be there yet. Although no. they said estimated that they were going to do it, but you know with e-readers, 
its design, ma you know, manufacturing. That whole thing takes like four or five months just to get the design right. And then you ship it to Foxconn, which Amazon deals with. And it takes months for them to manufacture, to do all the parts, to yeah. do, all, do all that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think th with Amazon's e-reader plans for the first half of 2018, because they'll probably do a refresh of the Amazon Kindle Basic. Because right now, oh, yeah. that's using an older Pearl yeah. screen, yeah. and it probably will use an Ian Carter screen. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, they'll have to refresh the Paperwhite this year because they didn't even do it in 2017. Uh, yeah, they did. So the Kindle Basic, uh, the Paperwhite, you can think of those two e-readers as something that they're going to refresh in right. 2018. And, I, and you know, with the Kindle Basic, they're going to get away from Ian Pearl and use Ian Carter. They have to because Pearl is like what? It's like eight or long, nine years yeah, old now. Long time. Like. Pearl HD is tremendously old, and although it is Amazon's entry level e reader, they still have to. They have to give people a reason to buy it. Amazon <laughs> always likes to have their kind of premium luxury model, and then they always want to have their race to the bottom model that's either, you know, $49, $39 on sale, $59. They like to have that entry level model. Yeah. They really do. All right. So we've cool. covered a lot of ground today. What we want Amazon to do versus what they're probably realistically right, going to do, right. uh, their plans, what we'd like to see. But now it's time for you guys to weigh in. You've heard us talk about this in detail today. What do you guys think? What would you like to see in a future Kindle e-reader? Large screen, five inches, seven inches, eight inches, all anywhere in between. What type of software features would you like to see? Would you like them to do anything with the software? Uh, the floor is wide open. Drop a comment below. Forgetty Reader.com is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.